Good morning. It's Tuesday, the 6th of July, uh, 2021. We're here at the Rectory of St. John's Church for morning prayer according to 1928 prayer book. Little Jude report. He's decided to join us this morning. Uh, not a frequent occurrence. Um, we're here to render thanks to God for the great benefits that we've received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. But first, let us acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness with a hum penitent, obedient, a humble heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults, Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises, declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant a most merciful Father for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers, to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship, and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We're on the sixth day of the month at morning prayer. The Psalms for the day begin on page 374, Psalms 30 and 31. Psalm 30 is a song of grace. God's anger is never the final word. Joy is always on the way for those who trust in him. And there's a recollection of a false self-confidence that was shaken precisely so that the psalmist could learn to trust truly in God not in himself. I will magnify thee, O Lord, for thou hast set me up and not made my foes to triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Thou, Lord, hast brought my soul out of hell. Thou hast kept my life. 
that I should not go down into the pit. Sing praises unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks unto him for a remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endureth but the twinkling of an eye, and in his pleasure is life. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be removed. Thou, Lord of thy goodness, hast made my hill so strong. But thou didst turn thy face from me, and I was troubled. Then cried I unto thee, O Lord, and gat me to my Lord right humbly. What profit is there in my blood when I go down into the pit? Shall the dust give thanks unto thee, or shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned my heaviness into joy. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Therefore shall every good man sing of thy praise without ceasing. O my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. You see, we can give thanks even for our misfortunes, if they indeed drive us to God into a deeper trust and reliance on him. Psalm 31 is a prayer for deliverance. Uh, the psalmist is confronted by uh, a conspiracy so powerful that all his friends have abandoned him. And of course, we think of the isolation into which Christ found himself forsaken by his own disciples. The psalmist looks back on past mercy, considers his present tr distress, but confidently anticipates a future deliverance. And it is, of course, the relation there of the memory of past mercy is the ground of future hope. In thee, O Lord, have I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thine ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. And be thou my strong rock and house of defense, that thou mayest save me. For thou art my strong rock. Be thou also my guide, and lead me for thy name's sake. Draw me out of the net that they have laid privily for me, for thou art my strength. Into thy hands I commend my spirit, for thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thou God of truth. I have hated them that hold of lying vanities, and my trust hath been in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble, and hast known my soul in adversities. Thou hast not shut me up in the hand of the enemy, but hast set my feet in a large room. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble, and mine eyes consumed for very heaviness, yea, my soul and my body. For my life is waxen old with heaviness, and my years with mourning. My strength faileth me because of mine iniquity, and my bones are consumed. I am become a reproach to my among all mine enemies, but especially among my neighbors, and they of my acquaintance are afraid of me. And they that did see me without conveyed themselves from me. I am clean forgotten, as a dead man out of mind. I am become like a broken vessel. For I have heard the blasphemy of the multitude, and fear is on every side. While they conspire together against me, and take their counsel to take away my life. But my hope hath been in thee, O Lord. I have said, Thou art my God. My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. Show thy servant the light of thy countenance, and save me for thy mercy's sake. Let me not be confounded, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the ungodly be put to confusion, and be put to silence in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which cruelly, disdainfully, and despitefully speak against the righteous. O oh, how plentiful is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, and that thou hast prepared for them that put their trust in thee, even before the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them in the covert of thine own presence from the plottings of men. Thou shalt keep them secretly in thy tabernacle from the strife of tongues. Thanks be to the Lord, for he hath showed me marvelous great kindness in a strong city. But in my haste I said, I am cast out at the sight of thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my prayer when I cried unto thee, O oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints. For the Lord preserveth them that are faithful, and plenteously rewardeth the proud doer. Be strong, and he shall establish your heart, all ye that put your trust in the Lord. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. See, there's that radical inward spiritual stability and strength, which doesn't depend on worldly circumstances, and therefore is not affected by them, even in the midst of this terrible sense of isolation uh, and uh, uh, assault, uh, because his trust is in the Lord, uh, he is inwardly untouched by that. Now, um, we have lessons to read. Uh, we're back uh, in our sequence of reading from Samuel and now in Kings, uh, the 22nd verse of the 8th chapter of the first book of Kings. And this is Solomon's prayer at the dedication of the temple, and uh, uh, which he has uh, constructed. Uh, and uh, um, to replace the old, uh, in principle, portable uh, tabernacle or tent. Um, and this is really a noble prayer because what it does is uh, Solomon acknowledges, of course, the uh, it brings the temple uh, into relation with God himself and the law into relation to God's own will. And he shows the ways in which the, the temple and the law do not uh, um, take the place of God. In a certain way, uh, he uh, reflects on the way in which they are um, instruments. Um, uh, they have a subordinate place. Well, I'm going to let uh, Solomon's words um, uh, replace my stumbling ones. And Solomon stood before the Lord, altar of the Lord, in the presence of all the congregation of Israel, and spread forth his hands toward heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or on the earth beneath, who keepest covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart, who hast kept with thy servant David my father that thou promised him. Thou spakest also with thy mouth, and hast fulfilled it with thine hand, as it is this day. Therefore now, Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David my father that thou promised him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, so that thy children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. And now, O God of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified, which thou spakest unto thy servant David my father. And will God indeed dwell on the earth See, that's, that's indeed the question. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house that I build yet. Yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee today, that thine eyes may be opened toward this house night and day, even toward the place of which thou hast said, my name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel, when they shall pray toward this place. And hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place. And when thou hearest, forgive. And so you see the, the temple has its, has its limitation, um, but in the in relation to God is is uh, powerful. The law also has its limitation. Um, in the transgression of the law, uh, beyond transgression of the law, there is grace. If any man trespass against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear, and the oath come before thine altar in this house, then hear thou in heaven, and do, and judge thy servants, condemning the wicked to bring his way upon his head, and justifying the righteous, to give him according to his righteousness. When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall turn again to thee, and confess thy name and pray, and make supplication unto thee in this house, then hear thou in heaven, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again unto the land, which thou gavest unto their fathers. When heaven is shut up, and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, if they pray toward this place, and confess thy name, and turn from their sin, 
what thou afflictest them. Then hear thou in heaven, and forgive the sin of thy servants, and of thy people Israel, for that thou teach them the good way wherein thou, they should walk, and give rain upon thy land, which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance. If there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locust, or if there be caterpillar, if there any be besieged them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man, or by all thy people Israel, we shall know every man the plague of his own heart, and spread forth his hands toward this house. Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and do, and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. For thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men, that they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people Israel, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake, for they shall hear of thy great name, and of thy strong hand, and thy stretched out arm, when he shall come and pray toward this house, hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all people of the earth may know thy name, to fear thee, as do thy people Israel, and that they may know that this house, which I have builded, is called by thy name. If thy people go out to battle against their enemy, whithersoever thou shalt send them, and shall pray unto the Lord toward the city which thou hast chosen, and toward the house that I built for thy name, then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy, far or near. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captives, and repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of, the, of them that carried them captives, saying, We have sinned, we have done perversely, we have committed wickedness, and so return unto thee with all their heart, with all their soul, in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause. And forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, and all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee. And give them compassion before them who carried them captive, that they may have compassion on them. For they be thy people and thine inheritance, which thou broughtest forth out of Egypt, from the midst of the furnace of iron, that thine eyes may be open unto the supplication of thy servant, and unto the supplication of thy people Israel, to hearken unto them in all that they call for unto thee. For thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth, to be thine inheritance, as thou spakest by the hand of Moses thy servant, when thou broughtest our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. Here endeth the first lesson. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holiness, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and dwellest between the cherubim, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holiness, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, praised and exalted above all forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Uh, now we're reading uh, the second chapter of Thessalonians, uh, Paul's epistle to the church in Thessalonica. And uh, in the, both these letters to the Thessalonians, one of the themes that keeps turning up is indeed uh, Christ's return, the, the second coming. And here he's uh, dealing with um, some erroneous ideas about it. He's correcting those ideas, uh, but he's also producing some uh, exhortation and encouragement and assurance uh, for the Christians of Thessalonica as they look toward 
the second coming, because what he's talking about is a kind of um, final crisis, uh, a final assault of uh, earthly powers and against um, God's kingdom and uh, the tribulations uh, that might be expected. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled either by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now you know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through the sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ, and God even our Father, which hath loved us, and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts, and establish you in every good word and work. Here endeth the second lesson. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. United in the confession of one faith, one Lord, one God and Father of all, let us commend ourselves and one another and the whole church and people of God 
to his gracious and loving care. I bid your prayers for all sorts and conditions of men, that God's ways may be known unto them, his saving health unto all nations. I bid your prayers for the church universal uh, in this place and throughout the world for its unity in uh, the truth and of the gospel and in brotherly love, uh, for our country and all countries, for their peace, order, and good government, the deliverance of the peoples of the world from oppression and strife and misery, uh, for the clergy and people, uh, for faithfulness in witness and in worship, for those who suffer in mind, body, or estate, that they may have patience under their sufferings and a happy issue from all their afflictions. Bid your prayers uh, for those who suffer from mental illness and depression, for those dealing with substance abuse and substance addiction, uh, for those who are bereaved, orphaned, abandoned, grieving, Uh, for those suffering from cognitive impairment. For those uh, undergoing surgery or recovering from it. For those suffering from debilitating infirmity, chronic pain. For those dealing with cancer and its therapies. Uh, for those who are suffering from effects of stroke. We remember before God those who've departed this life in the faith of Christ and are at peace in him, that we with them may rise to glory. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Grant, O Lord, we beseech thee, that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by thy governance, that thy church may joyfully serve thee in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. From uh, Psalm 30, uh, wonderful lines. Sing praises unto the Lord, O ye saints of his. Give thanks unto him for a remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endureth but the twinkling of an eye, and in his pleasure is life. Heaviness may endure for night, but joy cometh in the morning. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The good Lord order this day and your doings in his peace. Amen. And uh, try to do something more constructive than Mr. Jude is doing right now. <laughs>